Good evening and welcome to Invisible Ray's film premiere. And this week uh, we're very excited because it's Halloween, it's a bit spooky this week, so I'm going to put a couple of Halloween films uh, on. Not today, but I'm going to do one today for the younger viewers, but it's a family film. And it's called The Amazing Mr. Blunder. Now I remember this one from a kid, as a kid because I used to show it every Christmas up until about like the mid 80s, 90s. But I mean, it's suffered in recent years because it's a little bit powdered fanny, you know, it's a little bit, too dirty, you know, uh, and it's classist, you know, uh, the, the working class people in it, like Enid Blyton, are the villains, and the uh, and the posh lardy da kids, oh, too dirty. So it gets a little bit annoying in the class level uh, of things, but, it's a very enjoyable film. It is a ghost story. It has got uh, Lawrence Naismith from the Valley of the Quangi as um, as as Mr. Blunden, the titular hero. He's not much of a hero, really, but I mean, you, you you'll get it when you watch it. It's also got the gorgeous Lynn Frederick playing a ten-year-old at the age of eighteen, which was about which she was good at that kind of thing, you know, playing a playing a little girl at the age of 30 and stuff like that. Married Peter Sellers, died of drugs overdose, terrible story. Um, it's also got Diana Dawes, who considered herself a sex symbol once upon a time in the 50s. She was just an annoying fat bitch though, really. <laughs> but she plays the villain, who's married to Wiggins. Anyway, listen, you make your own mind up, you watch the show, and I'll see you later. Goodbye. this morning. Lovely fish. All fresh. Fresh mackerel. Yes, can I help you? 
Mrs. Allen, this is Richard Allen. Yes, that's right. I represent a firm of solicitors, madam. The firm of Blunden, Blunden, Claverton and... Uh, I suppose it's about the rent. Oh, no, indeed, no, madam. I'm no debt collector. I am a partner in the firm of Blunden, Blunden, Claverton and... Oh, what on earth is that young man's name? Well, no matter now, the important thing is that the news I bring will, I am sure, prove entirely welcome to you. At least I trust it will prove entirely welcome to you, Mrs. Anna? Well, you'd better come in then out of the cold. Oh, thank you. Stand up, children. We have a visitor. Well, do continue, my dears. It is I who must apologize for disturbing your meal. Do sit down. Perhaps you'd like a cup of tea? Well, the chair I accept with gratitude, madam, but the tea, I'm afraid, I must decline. But I'll come straight to the purpose of my visit. Mrs. Allen, I trust you'll not be offended, but I'm in a position to offer you a job, or rather a reasonable salaried occupation. Well, why should I be offended? My firm is seeking a reliable person to act as a caretaker to a property which is in our charge. And so far, we have been... Well, we've had some difficulty in finding anyone willing to take the post. No difficulty? Why difficulty? It's the remoteness. You understand? It's a fine house, pleasantly situated, but it stands alone some way from the nearest village. A little woman comes up to do what cleaning is necessary. There's a rent-free caretaker's cottage attached to the house, and your duties will be very light. For the children's sake. What do you say? It is awful, isn't it? But it's the best that I could find. So little money, so many debts. A widow's pension is all that I have. Well? Excuse me, he's had a cold. I think he must have earache. I'll get some warm oil. Oh, right. Shall I help, Mother? No, it's all right, thank you, dear. Just look after our guest. rather an unusual question and I want you to consider it seriously. Of course, sir. You're far away. Oh, yes, far away. Do you think you'd be afraid if you saw the ghost? I, I think, quite honestly, sir, I'd be a little bit scared. I think it would depend on what sort of ghost it was, sir. I mean, if it was just wandering around in a white sheet, moaning a bit, well, it would be all right, wouldn't it? But if it was one of these skeletons with no head and a nasty grin, well, that's different, isn't it? You can't grin if you've got no head, stupid. Exactly. Anyway, I have very good reason to believe there are no such visions. No, these ghosts would appear to you... Well, very much like ordinary people. Children, perhaps. Children of your own age. Or even an old man, such as myself. We wouldn't be afraid of a ghost like that, would we, Lucy? I mean, well, you wouldn't know they were ghosts, would you? Unless, of course, you could see through them. I mean, right through them. And even that wouldn't be very scary, if their heads were in the right place. Sometimes ghosts are people who come back seeking help. Well, we would help if we could. Wouldn't we, Jamie? I 
I believe you understand, little lady. Children do sometimes. But as they grow older, they lose their power to believe in the unlikely. When you come to the house, you'll hear all sorts of strange tales from the people in the village. They'll tell you it's haunted. But you mustn't be afraid, because when the time comes, you'll know what to do. We shan't be afraid. We'll do what we can. Thank you, Lucy. James, thank you. Well, I must not stay. I've been here too long. Well, shall I fetch Mother? No, no time, no time. But ask her to call at my chambers tomorrow. The chambers? Where is it? What a sensible lad. Will it be there? I mean, you know, is this right? Will it be there? This address, it looks a bit old. It will be there. Happy Christmas! What? Oh, yes, a happy Christmas! Tomorrow, then, tell them I sent you. Claverton will be there, or young, uh... Oh, what is his busted name? You've come about a job. I understand you're looking for a caretaker for a rather remote country house. The job has not yet been advertised, madam. How did you come to hear about it? An old gentleman came to see me. Jamie, do you have a card? I expect it was Mr. Blondin, that being the first name on the card. He informed me of the vacancy and advised me to call on you. I see. You must forgive me, madam. Mr. Blunden has not been at the office recently and I did not realise he had taken a hand in the matter. If you let me, please let me have your name. I will uh, inform Mr. Claverton that you are here. <laughs> oh, Alan, uh, Mrs. Allen and uh, my children, Mrs. Lucy, Lucy, James. Oh, and this is Benjamin. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Allen. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, that's all. It's very odd. Very odd indeed. Uh, please, Mrs. Allen, Mr. Claverton will see you now. Thank you. Good morning. Ah. You may sit down if you wish. You are looking at Mr. Blunden's portrait? Yes, he's the one who came to see us. I'm afraid I've caught you out there, Sonny Jim. The portrait is, in fact, of Mr. Blunden's great-grandfather, who died about a hundred years ago, and I doubt if our Mr. Blunden came to see you. He's bedridden. Should be in a home. He should. <laughs> well, dear lady, I must see how delighted I am to have a, a responsible person like yourself in charge. I shall write and confirm our arrangements. Yes, yeah, Arnold? And I feel quite certain that you'll have no trouble from that little matter we talked about. A mere country superstition. Nothing more. Are Nothing you Smith? More. I beg your pardon? Are you Smith? 
You know, McCard, London, Claverton and Smith. No, Sonny Jim, I am Mr. Clatterbuck. You should be glad. Why? No one could forget a name like that. It is a silly name. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> Cheerio then, Herbert. Cheerio, Dick. Any more want to get out then? Just us now, Herbert. The big house, please. Langley Park. Langley Park? Langley Park, Herbert. Yes, Mr. Clodderbook. Don't ask me to help with the bags like the toys before, will you? Ghoulies and ghosties and long leggedy beasties that place has got. Don't ask me to help, Mr. Clodderbook. Proceed, Herbert. Mere country superstition. Shut up, loose.
sad. only the village children who say the house is haunted. Well, it probably is. Children know a lot more than grown-ups about such things. Good night, Lucy. Good night. Just a lot of rumours, I expect, Jamie. But I did hear voices. Honestly, I did. My dear girl, all big houses have voices. If they're alone for a long while, everyone knows that. Just trying to be clever. Good night, James. good sense. Uh, I beg your pardon? You didn't run away screaming. You didn't run away. Well, I did. At first I did. Oh, I'm sorry, but in the mist I thought you were, well, ghosts. They do say the house is haunted, you know. Yes, we did know. I suppose if we say that we are ghosts, you will run away. Mr. Blunden said children of our own age. You are 
ghosts. You really are. But if you are ghosts, then you must be dead. Of course we're not dead. You do such stupid things, don't you? We're no more dead than you are. You can be a ghost, but you don't have to be dead. He's really too young to understand. <laughs> George, I do believe we have found help. Tell us. Tell us how we can help. I mean, who are you? Yes, tell us in the very beginning. Start with Once Upon a Time. All the best stories start with that. James. All right. Once upon a time, we live very happily here. But in the spring of the year 1818, our mother and father were tragically killed when their carriage overturned coming back from London one night. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he be dead, that shall he dead. Uncle Bertie, who was our father's half-brother, became our guardian. And Mr. Blunden, the family solicitor, became our other guardian. Do stop sniveling in front of the servants. It'll do no good. Cry, boy, cry. After the funeral, Uncle Bertie lived in London. He took an unusual interest in the ballet and fell in love with a ballerina. Arabella, and she's very pretty. Uncle Bertie thinks so too, but in her mind, she's only a child. returned home to Langley Park to supplement his income from a private source. So Arabella and Uncle Bertie were engaged. That evening, they went to ask Bella's parents for their consent to marry. Mr. and Mrs. Wickens were the proprietors of a select hotel. Mama, this is Bertie, what I told you about. We're engaged, look! Wickens! Come and meet this here top! It's our little Bella's intended! Wickens! Watch this, Arthur.
Uncle Bertie and Bella were married. Where's she going for her honeymoon? Like she says, Paris, Rome. I mean, even if it's only the Isle of Wight, for God's sake, put her out of her misery. It may well be the Isle of Wight, dear mother-in-law. The Isle of Wight? God's truth! The steady dearest. The Isle of Wight. The truth is that financially I am hopelessly embarrassed. Hopelessly. I haven't said so, as I had no wish to spoil our wedding day. Well, you're having a darn good try, Albert. You mean you're, you're short of the ready, is that it? Well, blow me. One empty bottle of gin you are. Who's got it all, then? Who's got it? Master Georgie is the only member of the family with money. £30,000, to be exact, left to him by his father, William. Would have been mine, of course, but being only a half-brother, Georgie gets it. £30,000? Left to him in trust, mother-in-law, until he's 21. It can't be touched. It's George's and his alone. Unless he dies, of course, but heaven forbid the thought. But he's only ten. He's got years to go. My Bella will have gone to seed in 11 years. I'm not going to have her living in this dirty great mansion in poverty, slowly going to seed. Dear mother-in-law, I will find a way, I assure you. My Bella will not suffer, I promise. Oh, she will not. You are quite correct there, Albert. <laughs> my little rose, my nightingale. That George has got a lot to answer for, being only ten and all that money are going to waste. He's got a lot to answer for. I shall commence my economies by sacking as many of the surplus staff in this house as I can. We shall have our honeymoon. <laughs> My dearest Bella. Oh, make it soon, Bertie, dearest. Make it soon. Did it. There, now you. Most of the staff were sacked, and Mrs. Wickens took over the housekeeping. And good riddance to the lot of you! Sarah! Georgie! Are you trying to get me any hot with your uncle, are you? Get in here before you catch your death cold. Well, don't dawdle. Run! Catch their death cold. Consumé coming along.
There, Miss Sarah, that'll keep you warm. There's a power warm in newspapers. Quick, don't mind speaking. Right then. Good night, Miss. Good night, Master Georgie. Good night, Tom. That's the wonder you've been in bed. Here's your supper. Leave that window open, Mrs. Wickens' orders. Good night, then. Good night, sir. For a long time, we endured hard beds, scraps, and bread and water. We did not truly think ourselves in danger. Then, one night, it's taking too long, Mr. Wickens. Getting fatter, not thinner. Fatter, Wickens. Do you hear me, you ugly lump? Because I'm a talking to you. Wickens, can you hear me? Mm. Good. I was talking to you. It didn't get no cold. Wife. Why? There was a blooming hurricane blowing through here the other night. They should be wasting away with a cold in their bones. Aren't you interested in cash, you great lump? Cash! Thirty thousand pounds if he snuffs it. It'll be all our darling little bellas. If that Georgie snuffs it. Her as well. That's... Tuck up, Sarah. Er as well. They mean us, Georgie. What snap it, Sarah? Do they mean to kill us, Sarah? An accident must be for them. Can't wait forever. An accident. A quick accident, my love. And you are going to help me. How are you listening? Mm. Go, Bertie. We must tell him at once. Come on. You are a naughty boy. And now the muse of love, my little sausage. A foot forward. <laughs> lovely, my Nana, lovely. <laughs> One more time, my little sausage. <laughs> lovely, my little precious sausage. Uncle Bertie, oh, please, Uncle Bertie. Oh, what do you think you're doing? Uncle Get out of here, both of you. You should be in bed wandering about at this time of night. Are we to have no privacy? But we're to be murdered. You certainly are by me, unless you go at once. Shall I take a strap to you? But we are. Oh, please listen. Mrs. Wickens says that we are too fat, that we should be cold and that an accident should snuff us. Bed, Sarah. It's true, it's true. It is. Bed, both of you. Not in the mood for drama tonight. Your Auntie Bella has been entertaining me with classical moments from history, and you bring me low drama. Be off with you at once. Bella, send them out, my love. Yes, Bertie, my love. How dare you talk like that about my ma and pa? Bed. Please, Uncle. For the last time, Sarah. Murders, indeed. Imaginations. Overactive imaginations. Say your prayers and ask God to forgive you. Langley Park. Buckinghamshire. Yes, I've put that. Box. April 16th, 1818. Dear Mr. Blunden, you are our only chance. The Wiccans are bent on destroying us. Please, please help. Uncle Bertie won't listen. He says it's all imagination, but it's not. We shall run away if you don't help. The danger is very great for us. Yours. Sarah. And me. 
Oh, come along, come along, come along. Do you feel any childish complaints? About your harsh treatment? And threaten to run away. They must not run away, Mrs. Wickens. Lock them up. A oh, beautiful job. Beautifully done. Right, Wickens. <laughs>
the library is please. Green and blue, the following herbs together. Balm, hyssop, mudward. Musk, toad flax. Toad flax? Yes. Bergamot, red william, penny whistle, spliffet, and drink the liquid. It will separate your minds completely from the time you are in. Do you understand that, Georgie? A bit. Perhaps this is our chance, Georgie. Look, to make the mind still, to escape from the time. There, Georgie, to escape. Someone is trying to tell us how to escape. Not to another place, but to another time. Oh, Georgie. It might be poisonous, Georgie. I've thought of that. I'll put it in Mrs. Ricky's gin to see if she'll die or not. Suppose she does die. Good if she does. That'll be murder. I'm not giving it her because I think it is poison. I'm only making sure it isn't. Why are you pulling a funny face? Either Mrs. Wiggins or her cat, and that cat never did anyone any harm. Breakfast, you brats! potion as we did. After that, it depends upon whether your will is great enough to help. Well, it is. You don't think we'll just stand around and let that awful old woman do you in. Snuff us. Snuff you. Sarah. We'll help you, Sarah. Sarah, I don't feel well. Sarah. Don't be afraid, darling. When you get back, I shall be there. he's so young. He often returns before me. It's all right. We always arrive back together. We must hurry. Georgie is a warning to us that I may soon follow him. Now, please don't forget, put five leaves of each into a bowl and pour on hot water. Keep it warm for an hour and strain it off through a muslin cloth. Bring the potion and meet me here at sunset tomorrow. Promise you'll not fail us. Jamie, Promise! Promise! Please, promise! I promise! I promise, Sarah. Let us resolve that in us today shall die all the uncharitable thoughts, the corrosive indifference, the acts of selfishness, the impurity of thought that comes between us and the love of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Shall we sing hymn number 292? Do you 
mind if Lucy and I left? No point in asking why? No. All right, not too late, Mac. Lunch at 12.30. Idea. What? All we have to do is hunt in the churchyard. Why? Well, Lucy, sometimes you really are dim. If none of the gravestones has Sarah and George's names on, then we shall know they didn't die. Don't you see? We shall know in advance that we've saved them. Oh, I see. We can go off into the past knowing everything will be all right. Yes, I told you it was a brilliant idea. Shh! Quiet, you children. William, no. That's right. It were a hundred years ago. Poor little things, it were a real tragedy. Do you know who they were, then? I reckon I could tell you about every blessed grave in this churchyard. You see, I've been sexing here nigh on 40 years now. Please, who were they? It was a terrible thing. The fire it were while they were abed. A furnace of a fire. Started in the library, they say. The books burned like tinder. And nobody could get to them because of the heat, you see, poor little mites. Down in the corner, over by here. But come along here with me and I'll show you where this place is. Down here. Come on down here. There, you see. No headstone. Some say it was a gardener's son tried to save them. A little lad he were. Don't know his name. My grandfather told me he were either a little nipper about your age. About this little lad, he climbed the drain pipe to the bedroom window. But somehow the pipe gave way. And he come plunging down and was killed. And then there was the guardian, an old gentleman, lawyer or something he were. Well, he was at the house that night. And he was on his way back to London when his carriage broke down. And when he seen the flames in the distance, he come riding back. And when he seen that they were dead, he took on cruel, real cruel. Too late, too late, too late, he kept saying. And then he... And he starts a crying. Some say he died of grief. Others say he was never quite right in his head again. Yes, some claim to have seen his ghost wandering about the old house, Langley Park there, as well as the ghost of the two children in the garden. Have people... Well, I mean... Have people really seen them? Indeed they have. For the last hundred years they have. It's haunted. You don't want to go anywhere near there, my dears. It's haunted all right. Don't you go anywhere near the hill. We've got to. Got to? Why? We live there. Yeah. Oh, I was only joshing. I made it all up, I did. There is no such thing as ghosts. <laughs> that depends entirely on your point of view. Well, there is ghosts, you see, because I've seen them. Now. you changed your minds. Where's Georgie? He had a slight disagreement with Mrs. Wickens. She's locked him in the cellar. Tom is guarding him for me while I'm away. We can't be long as I only drank a little of the potion. Sarah, before anything else we must tell you that... James, 
Tell me, James, whatever it is, tell me. Well, it was in the graveyard. On the tombstone. We found your name and George's. The, se the, the sexton said it was a fire. It's true. It was a fire. Oh, Sarah. I know about the grave. I've never told Georgie. But I know. But the date, Sarah, it was a hundred years ago tomorrow. That's true. London. Remember? Camden Town. Oh, hello. Oh, yes. We haven't much time, my dears. Excuse me, sir. But you're dead, too. Part of me, James, my boy. A part, I'm dead. I am the dead part of London. The other part of me was the Blunden who wouldn't listen to the pleas of Sada and Georgie. The Blunden who failed them. I have suffered for a hundred years, tormented by my own conscience. It seems more like a thousand years. But now I've been given the chance to put right the wrong, the terrible wrong I have done, and to bring my punishment to an end. But first I have to find someone to trust me. To trust me once again, to trust me even with his life. And lastly, I must go back to undo the harm I've caused. Mr. Blunden, sir, I'm the one who has to trust you, aren't I? I mean, that's why you brought us here to Langley Park. Why you came to Camden Town? Yes. It's not an easy thing, I know, James. But all will be revealed, my dears. Tell me what to do. That is not yet clear, my boy. But whatever it may be, nothing shall harm you. I promise that I shall guard you from all dangers, however they may come. I know I'm not worthy. But it's our only hope. Sardis, George's, and mine. Thank you. Lucy. You must trust him, too. I'll try. I really will. It's time to go. Nothing shall harm you. There's Georgie. The sexton said it was a fire. Promise you'll not fail us. Jamie, promise. Go with you. Back to your time. I see by the way you're dressed. I see by the way you're dressed. I see by the way you're dressed that you don't come from hereabouts. I suppose you wouldn't have come from the new world, would you? New world? Hey, America, the new world. Uh, yes, I suppose you could say we have come from the new world. Well, they say it's a wonderful place. Yes, it is. Of course, it is a terrible long journey. But, uh, but this one I plan to make myself one of these days when I'm older, like. Oh, Miss Sarah's been teaching me to read and write. I only mean to go there and try my fortune. They say there's a fine future in America right, for a young man as can, as can read and write and ain't afraid of a bit of hard work. Yes, Tom, yes. Now, how's my brother? Oh, yes, he's safe. But he's growing hungry, he told me. Sarah! 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 Kissing and cuddling with that garden boy, no doubt. I know your game. Oh, let me stay, Ralph, please. I'm not afraid of her. 
Oh, you know I'd die for you, Miss Sarah. Yes, Tom, I know. Now go quickly, for my sake, please. All right. Shall we go with him? We don't want him to know we're here. No, stay in the shadows. Sarah! So there you are. And all alone, I see. Who was here with you a moment ago? One of them vulgar servants, I'll be bound. Not only have you got no sense, miss, you've got no taste, neither. I'm very sorry, Mrs Wickens. I only came out to speak a word to poor Georgie in the cellar. You came out to speak to him in the cellar? Where is the cellar, miss? Where is it? It's under the kitchen, Mrs Wickens. Oh, it's under the kitchen, Mrs Wickens. And what are you doing in the stable? The cellar ain't under the stable now, is it? No, Mrs Wickens. No, Mrs Wickens. I was going to talk to him through the grating. Oh, was you? Well, it'll be boarded up in the morning. Oh, please let him up, Mrs Wickens. He's only a little boy. It's so dark in there for him. Don't talk to me about that brat. After what he said to me, you'll be lucky to be out before Christmas next year. Oh, please, shut up! God, oh, my arm's gone mad! It was me and I'll do it again if you touch Sarah. You've got persons aiding and abetting you, have you? I tell you, it was me. James. I've got to knock off that red biddy. Last month it was Chinaman coming out the bottle and now it's invisible beings trying to grab my body. Are we ghosts? Did it work? Yes. But, but Tom could see us. Why can't she? Too old, too insensitive. Who is? Who's too blooming old? Oh, miss. didn't see us. It goes, we really are. Blooming Henry. Please don't go, Mrs. Wiggins, you're hurting. I hurt you, I hurt you if I have my way. Children are there, it's far too good. Meekin! Meekin! Yes? Yes, Mrs. Wiggins! Yes, Mrs. Take Miss Sarah up to her bedroom and lock her in. Yes. Yes, Mrs. Wiggins! Yes, Mrs. Rush my linnet and let your old ma see you. Ah, oh, Bella, you look a picture. Just you wait till that Bertie casts his eyes on you. He'd go all of an heap. Ain't it pretty, Sarah Sue? Ain't it pretty, Sarah Sue? Would it look the same on you? Ain't it pretty? Very pretty, Bella. Yes, it is. I think she looks like a stuffed pink pig. <coughs> Emma, blimey, she's having one of her turns. She can't see us, can she? She's only caught the mind of a child. I think perhaps she can. From the cellar. Get Georgie out of the cellar, Ma. 
And then perhaps they'll leave me alone. Who will leave you alone, love? There's nobody there. There is, Ma. Let Georgie go. Don't ever do it. What is going on? What is occurring? I heard screaming. to let him out of the cellar, or they'll be after me again. Let who out? Who is after you? What on earth is going on here, Mrs Wickens? Master George, he was where we would, sir. Bertie, dear, where we would. I, I put him in the cellar to cool his blood off, sir. Bertie, dear. Release him at once. I will not have Bella distressed. Meekin, fetch some smelling salts. Yes, sir. Why are you waiting? Son-in-law, my dear. How can I leave my baby like this? My wife, mother-in-law, is perfectly all right with me. I demand that you do as I say. Oh, if you shout, I'll have a heart attack. I will. I'll have heart failure. Oh, oh, Lord. Oh, I think I'm having it. I'm off. Oh. You are off, Mrs Wickens. Get up. Your performance this evening is not convincing. Get up, I say, and release Georgie instantly. Go with her, Sarah. Now, my little sausage, who is after you? We are. Oh, my God. Mama, 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 What is all that noise downstairs? They're having dinner. Sorry, he's going to be. Now, don't cry, my little Now, George, you should be too late. It was a sign, and it'll save a great deal of time. And I must get some money, my sausage, or there'll be no more silk dresses for you. Mr. Blunden, oh, sir, you what must do you listen think to you're us. Doing? Uncle Bertie won't feed us. He doesn't care if we snuff it. Listen to her. How dare you? You are two mischievous children. Your uncle is a very kind and considerate guardian, and you should be more careful. But it's Mrs. Wickens. She means to harm us, Mr. Blunden. She does. I know she does. Don't leave us here alone with her. Please listen to her. Bertie, dear, surely they cannot mean to accuse dear Mama. No, of course not, my dearest. Your mother is a splendid woman, kind and considerate at all times. Quite unique. Your mother is a drunk old witch, Bella. Oh, oh, dear. Dear. Oh, dear. I can't bear it, Jamie. I just can't bear it. Oh, 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 how dare you talk to me like that now, Bella? told him. He wouldn't see or hear you. He's a shallow, insensitive man. It's very difficult, Mr. Blunden. He came to help you, but there's so little we can do. It's not yet the time. Everything must go on as before. For a while, anyway, just as before. Now, you must just wait and be patient. Turn 
down as soon as I've raised enough money to keep us happy. But it's all occurring, my dearest sausage. Shall we go, Blundell? Au revoir, my daughter of a unique mother. Drink it all. Yes, Ma. Don't say as I said it, did you? Oh, that hurts, Ma. Yes, I told him like you said. Which was? I was doing it out of the kindness of my heart, and that I wanted them to get a good night's sleep. Oh, they'll sleep all right. There's my good little girl. Don't want them to think as I'm getting soft, now do I? I want you to take this tray to the kitchen and wash them mugs where we are. Where we are. Don't want no sediment. Wash them in boiling water. Do something quick. Oh, 
Oh, no! Come on! Stay here and warn Tom. His life depends on it, Moose. All right. Sarah! Georgie! Miss Sarah! Sarah! Is she all right, Miss? Is she safe then? Not yet. They're still in the nursery. Ginger's trying to break down the door. But the summer's approaching, I would gladly die for. I swear to God, Sarah, if you're guilt. It would only make things worse. No! Do you think you love 
Son, Jesus Christ, hast overcome death and opened unto us the gate of everlasting life, we humbly beseech thee that as by thy special grace preventing us thou dost put into our minds good desires, so by thy continual help we may bring the same to good effect through Jesus Christ our Lord. Suppose nothing has changed. How can anything have changed? Supposing Sarah and George's graves have gone. I can't be as silly as that. I 
can't really go wandering around, expecting to find a yawning hole, surrounded by a crowd of astonished villagers. Ooh. And yet if it is all the same, what does it mean? Did we dream it? Where is James then? Shepherd giveth his life for his sheep. Frederick, Percival Blunden, gave his life to save the children in his care. April the 21st, 1818. Yesterday, a hundred years ago. Did it? Jamie did it. Something. Can I go up and see him? Yes, of course you can, darling. Mommy, I do love you. Are you all right? Well, of course. Are you? Where have you been then? Been? Yes, been, James. Where have you been? You know very well. Where have we been? remember then? Well, do you? Lucy, did we? Did we? Yes, Jamie. I went to the churchyard and the children's graves have gone. We did it, Jamie. You did it. You help. A bit. <laughs> <laughs> Clutterbuck. Trouble. Camden Town, here we come. It's all right, darlings. I've had a letter and it's private. Mm. Secrets. Clutterbuck? To someone again. And what about us? Where do we belong? Cheerio, swans. Where have you been hiding? Has he finished yet? You're in the attic. No, I don't think so. You know that blue vase? Yes. 
Remember, I nearly smashed it when you were trying to get the keys for Mrs. Wickens. No, I couldn't do it. Strange to think of it being here all this time. Probably here before Sarah and Georgie. Probably be here long after we've left. Probably. Doesn't really seem fair. James! Lucy! Come on. What does he want? I don't know. He looks pretty nervous as usual. Mr. Clutterbuck, you know James and Lucy. Hello again. Well, when do we go? Go? Yes, go. Back to Camden Town. When? We don't have to go, Jamie. Uh, briefly, our Mr. Blunden, for some unknown reason, raised himself from his bed of mental misery, hurled himself as best he could last Thursday, 4.30 it was, into the office and said, get them papers on the marriage of Miss Sarah and Master Tom. So I bid, as I was told, him being the governor, Barmy or not, and here they are. It seems that we are related to these people. They were great-grandparents of Daddy's. Just over a hundred years ago, they lived here, and then they went to America. Not over a hundred years ago, exactly one hundred years ago, Mrs. Allen. New York, America, 1825. Sarah Latimer of Langley Park married a Thomas Mortimer, a gardener by trade. Very infadig, out of his class he was. Mr. Clutterbuck has come to tell us that we are the legal owners, not only of the cottage, but of the house itself. We can stay, plus an allowance of 500 pounds a year to keep us in comfort. In perpetuity. In what? For your lifetime, Sonny Jim. I won't go into all the legal logistics. You wouldn't understand. Step this way, if you please. All will be revealed. Sarah! Tom! I know. Great-grandma Sarah. Great-grandpa Tom. Three kings of Orient are, my dears. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye. Bye. Come again. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.
filming. Filming what? 